Welcome back. So today we're going to take a look at convergence lines or the keystone effect that happens in photography. Now there's multiple ways to fix this issue inside of both Photoshop and Lightroom. And we're going to take a look at one way in both Lightroom and actually Camera Raw that is exactly the same. And then I'll show you two other ways inside of Photoshop that you could fix this. Now the reason for this is because we are using what's called a fixed back camera. The back of the camera or the front of the camera is not able to move to fix the converging line issue. Now there's two ways to fix this. One is to use a tilt shift lens to change the direction of the convergence lines or by using an old view camera. So a view camera has tilt and swings and using the combination of the tilt and swings will allow you to fix the convergence lines as well. Now, since most of us today are shooting 35 millimeter and most likely don't have a tilt shift lens, how can we fix this inside of Photoshop and Lightroom to solve the issue? So today I'm gonna to show you a couple different ways to fix converging lines of the keystone effect inside of both Lightroom and Photoshop. So we're gonna head on over here to Lightroom. And what happens is that these lines, which actually should be running perfectly vertical up and down, actually look like they're tilting in. And so that's where we get the conversion lines. Because if you were to extend this line into infinity, eventually they will end up crossing. So what we want to do is change or transform this image so it looks more uniform and symmetrical. And how do we do that? Well, we're going to slip on over to the develop module and we are going to slide down here to transform. Inside this guided transform is a couple different automatic or semi-automatic modes that you can simply just click on to see if they work in the first place. If they don't, then we can go into guided and set things manually. So what I can do is just basically click on auto and just like that, the program is automatically trying to straighten these lines. Now, when it's doing this, we're losing part of this image. Now an image like this, we can go into Photoshop and actually use the new content aware fill to kind of fill in that area so we don't lose any of this because we shot this wide enough that the building really isn't interfering or intersecting with that area. But one of the problems with using this is we're transforming the image to make these lines vertical and we can see that looks pretty good. So we'll come here and hit level and levels not really doing much level is trying to like level out the horizon line. That's not going to work. So we're going to hit vertical verticals kind of doing just what automatic did. So it's trying to make these vertical lines perfect. We can try full and then we can go to guided. So in the guided option, we need to set the vertical line. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we are going to draw a line along where it should be straight or completely vertical. Now, when you do one line, it's not going to do anything because in this process, it needs actual two lines to work with. So I'm going to set two vertical lines. And then Photoshop or Lightroom in this case is going to straighten the image using that guided transform process. And you can see that guided transform has straightened out this building. Now it is distorting the whole image because it's transforming. It's basically pulling this edge out and pulling this edge out to make these lines as straight as possible. Now it's going to have a difficult time making everything perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down and we're going to click the vertical option again. Now, even though you use guided or vertical or any of these kind of automatic modes, you still have the ability to come in here and manually transform this image by yourself. So you'll notice right here, we have vertical, horizontal, rotate, aspect, scale, offset X and offset Y. So we can come in here and we can adjust this. So this is moving the back further the top closer to control the perspective of how this image looks. I can do horizontal where it's moving 
the left side in and the right side away. So I can transform a building in that direction. I can rotate a building so that we get our level or our horizontal axis accurately. The next thing is we have aspect. And so I can come here and change this aspect to kind of change the way that this building is going. So here we're kind of squishing the building in and here we're moving the building out. We have scale so we can make it larger or smaller. We can change the offset of the camera, moving it left or right or up or down. Now, if you need to reset any of these options, you just need to double click on the word and it's automatically gonna reset anything that we click on right here. And we're just gonna leave that there or we can turn this off or we can go right back to auto to where we liked it in the first spot. So that's how you control the convergence lines inside of Lightroom Classic. We're gonna move on over here to Photoshop. Now, if you're working inside of Photoshop, we can do the exact same thing inside of this program as well. So what we're gonna do is I've got my layer here and I'm just gonna hit Command J to duplicate that layer. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this layer into a smart object. So I'm gonna come out here into this space. I'm going to right click and I'm gonna go convert to smart object. Now converting this image to a smart object is going to allow this to be non-destructive and for me to have access to either go back in and change what I did or completely turn it off. The trick with Photoshop there's a couple different ways to do this. Some are better than others. The very first one, and probably the most efficient way, is we're actually gonna go backwards into Adobe Camera Raw. So if we had our raw image and we imported it into Photoshop, or even if it isn't raw, it doesn't make a difference. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here to Filter and go back into Camera Raw Filter. Now, the trick is Camera Raw in Lightroom Develop Module are the exact same program. So we don't have to relearn anything. All we gotta do is come up here and we've got our guided transform just like we had in Lightroom. Now the cool thing about this is, is we have all those automatic options just like we did before. So I can either come over here and click on auto or click on horizontal or level or any of these options and get a whole lot of automatic adjustments right away to fix this keystone effect or these convergence lines from happening. Now, just like before, if we do something, whether we don't do any adjustments or we do the automatic adjustment, we still have the ability to come in here and further adjust this with these sliders and they show you exactly what they're doing. So here we're controlling the way this shifts. We can rotate it. We can fix any of these issues that we have inside of our photo by manually selecting any of the adjustments and making stuff go on. If we want to change this to a grid so we can see that our horizontal and vertical lines are showing up, we can easily just turn that grid on and you can make your grid larger or smaller depending on your image. And then as you slide or adjust this stuff, you're trying to make these vertical and horizontal lines line up with your grid. That way you know you have a perfectly symmetrical building and that everything is working. So we can see right here, this line, it's a little bit lower and a little bit higher over here. So I can actually just kind of rotate this a little bit to level out this building just a little bit more. And then once I'm done, I can go ahead and hit OK. And you can see it's created what's called a smart filter. And the smart filter allows us to turn the effect off, go back to how we were originally. Or if we don't like exactly how something turned out, I can come in and just double click on the raw filter and it's going to take me right back into that transform area right here. And I can further adjust that and I'll make it look bad so you can see what's going to happen and then I can hit okay, and then it's gonna apply that new function. I'll be like, oh, that doesn't look good. Then I can go back into my raw filter, go back into my transform, and I can fix the areas that I kind of screwed up, and then I'll just kind of turn this off, turn this on, fix that building, hit okay. Just like that, non-destructively, we fix the convergent line issue. Now I'm gonna turn this off just for a little bit, there are some other ways that are a little bit simpler to fix just convergence lines or issues in the camera 
that you generally get. The first one we're gonna take a look at is lens correction. So inside of lens correction, lens correction is helping you, especially for wide angle distortion. Now we can come in here and do this a couple different ways. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually choose my camera. So I'm gonna to go to Canon. And a lot of times this will automatically pick inside when you open this up, it will know which camera you have. So I'm gonna pick my camera, which is a Canon Mark III. I'm not sure what they used here. And it also allows you to choose the lens that you are using. So in this case, we'll say that we were using a 15 millimeter, even though we didn't use a 15 millimeter. So it's allowing you to correct image distortion by, by selecting the camera model and lens model. Usually this adjustment doesn't help as much for convergence lines is when you, what you'll see is a straight line like this might arc. So it might come up and arc and that arcing is what this is gonna fix. Now, if this doesn't do a good job, you can always come in here and customize and do this. So notice we can warp this image. So this is that warping I was talking about. Normally your camera, when you shoot with the wide angle lens, might have this kind of warped level line. Well, the building isn't like that. So I can slowly adjust this and get this back to where it's completely level. Then we can come in here and fix some chromatic aberration. We can fix vignetting. And we can also come in here and fix by transforming the image manually, just like we were doing in guided transformation. Now this has been in Photoshop for a lot longer than the guided transformation has. This was originally the same thing or the way that you would fix that issue. Now, just in guided transformation, we have a whole lot more options. So I'm just gonna hit cancel, I'm not gonna apply that. So you can use lens correction to do this as well. The other option that you have would be to transform. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all, my whole building here, and I'm gonna come up here and go edit, transform, and we will look at a whole bunch of different things. But the first one we're gonna check out is perspective. So under perspective, if you pull and change the perspective, it's allowing you to change the perspective and kind of warp this image back to where it actually should be. Now the cool thing about Photoshop is we can use a couple of the different transformation modes at one time. So all I need to do is right click. Now if you're using a Mac, you're gonna hold either, you can either right click or hold control and click, which is right click, and it's gonna bring up that transform or freeze transform option. So we can come in here and we can change the scale, which really isn't gonna help much. We can rotate this image, so I can come in here now and I can rotate this. I'm just gonna hit Command Z to undo that. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna change skew, so I can come in here and change the skew so I can shift this over that way or this way. You can come to any of these points and skew this image. You're trying to shape this building to get these lines right, so I'm skewing this image to make everything more vertical. I'm gonna skew this way to kind of pull this line out, and I'm gonna skew this way to make that line out. Now that we've done skew, we can click on here. We've done perspective, we can do distort if we wanted. So the distort is gonna allow us a little bit more control. It's kind of a free form. It lets us go up, down in all directions to change the way this building is working. Before we could only go out and up. Distort allows us to kind of go two different directions at the same time if we needed to fix an issue in an image. And the last thing that you have is warp. And warp's gonna give you a whole bunch of crazy things that you could do here, but you I'll just you can fix image where it's changing. We can also use warp to manipulate the building to make it more interesting or surreal. So one cool thing about Photoshop, you don't need to always make things perfect. We can use it in the complete opposite way to make sort of a surreal building at the same time. But warp is giving us even more control over how we shift and manipulate this building. So transform did work pretty good. The biggest issue with transform is it is a destructive method, meaning you can't undo it. If you can't apply transform to a smart object, so if you notice this image down here, if I right click and change this to a smart object, 
I hit select all, I go up into the edit menu, notice that transform is not available for me anymore. That's because transform can't be used non-destructively. In this case, I tend to prefer either using Adobe Camera Raw or inside of Lightroom, the guided transform option, just because you can convert the image to a smart object and in the same time, make it non-destructive. Hopefully this video has been helpful. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>